So I imagine this is kind of what it looks like when you're going in to buy maybe your first carry gun or a new carry gun. You're going to see a lot of options just like this and even more than what I'm representing today. But that's the point of today's video. I got seven guns. I'm going to show you some of the best ones in the concealed carry market from, you know, kind of high priced all the way to the budget friendly and everywhere in between. And I'm going to try to help you navigate what can be kind of a confusing field right here. And it's only gotten more in depth, more guns over the past few years. So like I said, pros and cons, we're going to compare all of these. We're going to do some shooting, of course. And at the end, I'm going to tell you which one I like the best and why. So stick around for that. I will also tell you some of the ones that I'm not so fond of for various different reasons or just some of the features that I don't like on some of these. If you'd like to join me where I am having fun, getting mad at Call of Duty, playing games, doing music, love to have you on my other channel and my motorcycle channel as well where I do review bikes as well. Guns, bikes, video games, music, I offer a little bit for everyone. So please check out those other channels and subscribe if you would like to join me over there as well, let's go ahead and get into it. We're gonna start with some basic specs just to give you an idea. We're gonna roll those in, but there will be some specs that I talk about here in this video. All right, let's start with the Ruger Max 9 here, talk about the features. You got front and rear slide serrations. This one does come optics ready. You got a blacked out rear sight and a fiber optic and tritium front sight there. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. In the daylight, this is gonna shine really brightly. And at night, you're actually gonna get some light from that. The grip texturing right here is really subtle, but they it does a pretty decent job of keeping the gun locked into your hand. This is the Pro model, by the way. So this is gonna come either with or without a safety. The Pro model comes without the safety, of course. Magazine release right there. Standard capacity is gonna come either 10 or 12 plus one with the little finger extension right there. The CSX is one of the newer guns on the table here. They're all relatively new, but this one really just came out. Front and rear slide serrations. These serrations are really cut deep into the frame, so I do like that a lot. No optics ready version on this gun at all. You have a basic set of sights here with a little shelf, so you can use that shelf to reload off of a boot or a table or anything, uh, just in case you couldn't do it with your support hand there. But you have three white dots there. Uh, decent contrast for sure. This is a hammer fired gun. So this is going to be one of the, uh, this is really the only hammer fired gun that we have. So what you're going to do if you carry this gun and you carry it loaded in the chamber, you're going to actually engage that safety. So this gun is going to come with a safety. It has to have a safety because your hammer is going to be down whenever you carry this and then you sweep that safety off whenever you're ready to fire. Grip texturing. They, they, Smith & Wesson has kind of made a change since the Shield Plus and from the M2.0, it was really aggressive. Now it's more of a subtle balance. So the gun still stays locked into your hand, but it doesn't tear your skin or your clothes up. So they did a nice job there. This one again, 10 and 12 rounds is what you're gonna get in the magazine on this one. So it's gonna give you a little bit more extension right there. Uh, as far as that serrated on the top loaded viewport right there so you can see your brass down in the chamber shield plus there's various options here so this is the basic one you can get an optics ready or you can go with the performance center one as well you can get them with or without night sights this one has more of a ramp style sight so you're not really going to be able to pull on that on a boot or something like that you're really going to need your support hand for uh, this rear sight specifically flat face trigger now so do the evolution of the mmp trigger went from really bad to decent to now really good. They've done a really nice job with this flat face trigger here. Magazine release right there. Magazines do a good job of popping out of there whenever you need to get a fresh mag in. And again, really subtle design, more subtle than the M2.0, the previous version of the shields uh, here, but it still does a nice job. Loaded viewport right there. And then you've got 10 or 13 rounds in your extended mag, you can see right there. And that's gonna give you pretty much a full grip. And as a backup mag, that is a really nice option. Going to the P365, this one really started this whole higher capacity uh, and, and smaller frame guns. Not too long ago, we had guns like the PPS, M2, the, the original Shield, the uh, Ruger LC9S Pro, where you're talking about seven sometimes six, seven, and eight rounds in guns that are about the size of these, 
sometimes a little bit bigger and heavier. Uh, so this gun really started this and it's been an amazing carry gun, man. You have front and rear slot serrations here. Uh, you can get an optics ready version. I'll show you here in a minute. You have the x-ray sights, which are really nice because you have a blacked out tritium inserts back here, but you have this really bright green dot up front, man. So the contrast here is nice. And then of course that is a night sight as well. Uh, slide stop right there, very minimal design. Magazine release, all right. This one personally, it's a little bit hard to get to. It's got this little bit of a pinky extension right here, but it, it doesn't really add any capacity. So when these came out, they were strictly, I think 10 round guns. And then very shortly after that, when the P365XL came out with 12 rounds, you can still use the 12 round versions in this gun. And of course you can get the little sleeves to, to fill in this gap if you want to. So you have some compatibility there with the X. Overall, man, this is about one of the shortest guns that I find is comfortable to shoot, especially in nine mil. They just came out with a 380 version of this gun as well. Other side of the gun there is pretty clean and you do have a loaded viewport right there. Yeah, this one's 4.3 inches high and I am gonna show all of these compared to each other in line so you get an idea of what they look like as far as size. But this one, man, has been an excellent carry gun. The Taurus GX4, this is more of the budget side. So you have front and rear slide serrations again, no provisions for an optic or anything like that. Blacked out serrated rear sight and one white dot up front. So whereas the other ones are gonna use a little bit better materials, this one does use pretty good materials, but it also is more of a cost effective option. Not to say that it is not good because I will show you that it clearly is good. Um, but it's just a little bit less as far as like your materials where some of these are gonna come, you know, stainless steel slide and barrel everything. Uh, this one I think as far as the frame and the barrel is, is actually stainless steel. The slide is alloy. Um, the, the hammer or the barrel is not cold hammer forged. Some are cold hammer forged barrel and that's just gonna uh, increase longevity, maybe a little bit as far as like your accuracy, but really longevity. But again, don't get the wrong impression. For what this gun is and the price it comes in at, man, it offers a lot. The grip texturing Taurus does, one of the best, I think, in the industry on a pistol. The way this gun points is really nice and natural. And the flat face trigger, they actually do a really nice job with this trigger. And I will talk more about the triggers after we do the shooting, of course. The magazines pop right out of there and you have 11 rounds in this gun, it comes with two magazines, by the way. And for the size and the specs that we're talking about, they actually did a really nice job with this gun. You have a little bit of texturing up here for your support hand. They call it something fancy and whatever, but just know that texturing right there is for your support thumb uh, to get a better grip on the gun. Really nice option there from Taurus. Going to the newest kid on the block, this is the Hellcat Pro. And this one is on the bigger end of things, whereas the P365 is on the smaller end, this one's gonna be on the bigger end. And this almost, it's, it's a little bit shorter than a Glock 19, it's lighter than a Glock 19, and it's thinner than a Glock 19 with the same capacity. So it's really impressive what they've done here. You have front and rear slide serrations. This one came with a hex wasp, three and a half MOA dot, uh, two year battery life, it's in an always on uh, ready state. This thing has actually done a pretty decent job there. You have a tritium night sight up here and it has a yellow ring around it. So the contrast there is not bad. It's more of a drop in the bucket style with this U notch on the rear, kind of like Glock in a way. Uh, loaded viewport up here, grip texturing all the way around the pistol where some companies will kind of like the CSX. There's no grip texturing in here because there's not really not really a big need for that there. Yeah, Springfield Armory, they put it all the way around the gun. And this is one of the best balanced uh, texturings. They all do really a nice job, but this one is really nice. You have a spot there for your thumb and right there for your support hand as well. Again, two 15 round mags in this gun. So if you've ever kind of picked up any of these guns and you're like, man, these guns are just too small for my, for my personal taste, the Hellcat Pro, I don't see many people having an issue with that. Slide stop right there, takedown lever right there. You have a accessory rail as well. So if you want 
let's say you're somebody that's like, man, I just want to have a gun that can kind of do it all. You got to think some of these guns and most of them actually don't come with provisions for a rail. That doesn't mean you can't add a light or a laser. It just makes it a little bit more complicated as far as the options. But the Hellcat Pro kind of fixes that right there, okay? Trigger is not too bad. And this gun all the way around, cold hammer forged barrel, it's actually really nice. The last one here as far as the specs, and then we'll do our comparisons with each other, is the P365XL. And this is one of the best balances of size, capacity, shootability, this gun's pretty incredible, man. Front and rear slot serrations, Romeo Zero optic right here. And you have the X-ray sights, just like on the P365. And this one does co-witness with that front sight. But man, they did, they did a pretty terrible job, I think, as far as the way it co-witnesses. You have just a little notch right here. And you can see the front dot just like the top half of that front dot. So really don't get a full sight picture. I really hate the way they did this. They integrated it into the optic. Not a huge fan of that at all. Flat face trigger right here. Really nice. 12 round capacity comes with two of these magazines. Grip texturing is really nice. Other side of the gun is clean of course. Now let's compare the guns to each other so you get an idea of what they look like as opposed to just getting the specs on the screen here. Okay. So I got the guns that don't have optics on them on the table. I can't really put those down because they're just going to stick way up and it's not going to really be fair, but I'll show you the, I'll show those in a different way. But in order of the spec sheet, this is where we lie. You're at 4.4 inches high on the Taurus right here in the middle is the Ruger at 4.5 inches high and then 4.6 on the Smith and Wesson shield plus and 4.6 on the CSX there. So, the only thing that's kind of out of line is this Sig Mag right here because it has the pinky extension and somewhere along the way I lost the flat base plate. So you'll just have to kind of imagine that this, the flat one stops right there. So you don't have this little bit of extra uh, length right there. But the P365 is definitely the shortest. And when it comes to inside the waistband carry, this is what we're trying to conceal right here is the grip, all right? That's typically what it's gonna print. So on paper, these two, the Taurus and the Sig are gonna be a little bit easier to carry, but you can see how minimal the difference is. I'm gonna to try to lift these up and show you just what we're looking at here. So there you go. Sig, Taurus, Ruger, CSX, Shield Plus. Very minimal on the difference. I mean, you're talking at most from here to here, three tenths of an inch. It's not much. In my opinion, it isn't an even enough to really say one is better than the other as far as carrying. The only difference really here you're gonna notice is different grip texturings and how they feel in the skin, but none of these are overly aggressive. Uh, so I don't know that that's gonna mean too much of a difference either. Uh, as far as the barrel lengths and everything, overall lengths, they're all pretty much about the same as well. Let me turn them back this way. As you can see right there in the front, the shield might be the longest, but again, you're talking tenths of an inch at this point. So that's what those look like. Now, if you wanna bump up just a little bit, let me show you the other two. Here's the Hellcat Pro on the left and the P365XL on the right, about the same length. If we put them slide to slide here, they're about the same width and the height on paper, they're actually, I think they're the same. 4.8 and 4.8, yeah, so where the SIG comes down, let me point it more towards that way, so where the front of the SIG comes down, because you can see they kind of angle this down, so it's not a true comparison way we're looking at it here, but they do go from the longest point, I guess, because they're calling them pretty much the same, so 4.8 and 4.8, they're about the same, so you're talking from the SIG, P365, which is 4.3 inches high. And again, it's not gonna be truly fair because I got this extension on here. Uh, so you're talking about less than half of an inch there difference to get two additional rounds. Now what's impressive, because the XL is a little bit older, let's say you're like, man, I want maximum capacity. The difference 
here again is about a half of an inch. Check out the difference there. Now let me show you with maybe the Taurus because this one actually has a flat magazine. Check the difference out there. Now that is pretty significant. Do I have these lined up correctly? Because man, that looks, okay, there we go. That's a little bit more accurate. So we pretty much have a half of an inch worth of difference here. And in more ways than not, in many different parts of life, half of an inch is a pretty big deal, including these two carry guns. So there you go. There's a little bit of comparison between those two. One thing you're going to notice if you get into a gun shop and you, and you start, you know, picking these guns up and seeing how they feel to you, I would recommend that because everybody's kind of different. One thing you're going to notice is the way they point. And this is something that you can definitely do and, you know, obviously make sure it's empty and all that good stuff. But whichever one points most naturally to you. So when you, when you put the gun out, sights are right on target. That's definitely a good thing. Smith & Wesson uses an 18 degree grip angle and I tend to always kind of be right on point when I pull the gun up, man. It's just a very natural point of aim. But all of these guns really point super naturally. They all feel good in the hand. You know, this one being the shortest, this one being the longest. They all point really naturally half of that sight, it still is a natural pointing gun. So I don't know how much of a difference that will make to you, but it's just something you could kind of experiment with to get an idea of which one feels better to you. They're all gonna come with extended magazines. So if let's say the flat base plate magazine, well, they're not all gonna come with extended, but most of them will. So if the flat base plate doesn't work out for you or you can't get a really good grip on it, then maybe the extended one will, like the Shield or the Max 9, or whatever the case may be. But remember, the longer you go here, the harder it's going to be to conceal, depending on how you dress. Mrs. Hegshot, she can't carry something like this inside the waistband and realistically conceal it. Her shirts are too tight. It's just one of those things. Now, outside the waistband, she can definitely do that. But something like the P365 is kind of perfect for her, or even the Taurus GX4. It's, it's a really good option. So those are the things that you have to consider too, because again, these are concealed carry guns. They may be a home defense gun for you, uh, a, a, a truck gun or, or whatever, you know, just a, a primary duty gun for you in all of these different areas. But you also want to take concealed carry if that's something you decide to do um, into consideration. And just know the smaller the gun does not mean it's going to be the best shooter for you because the smaller it is, the more felt recoil generally you're going to get. So let's go ahead and hit the range. I'll show you how all of these shoot. And then when we come back, I'll talk about the triggers, pros and cons, and which one I like the best. I'll see you all in a minute.
if we want to sum up what happened there at the range, and let me tell you what the best shooting concealed carry gun I own is, that's the Shield Plus. They have struck the incredible balance here of size, weight, capacity, all that good stuff. But this trigger right here, the way this gun points is absolutely incredible in my hands, man. I am so impressed with this gun. I can imagine the Performance Center is even better and even more accurate. As a matter of fact, the Performance Center shield that I do have, the full size, is one of the best shooting guns, if not the best shooting gun I really own, dude. That's the best shooting one. If you're like, dude, which one shoots the best? My opinion is the Shield Plus. They all do a pretty decent job. And one thing that I noticed, we'll just go down the line here, is the Ruger, I love the sight contrast. Does a really nice job. The trigger is a little bit older design. This is from the LC9S Pro, and I I don't understand why they didn't upgrade it because they would have had almost a perfect carry gun here. Back in the day, this was about as good as it got, dude. But now it's just a really long kind of pull, kind of awkwardly just way too, too far out forward. The reset, not bad. Let's pull it real quick. I'm gonna try to just do one pull per gun here. I've done this in a full review too. Six pound, eight ounces. It's not the best, but if somebody's right on top of you and you're trying to save your life, you're not gonna be thinking about, man, I really wish I had that little bit better trigger in the Shield Plus. But when I'm shooting all these guns back to back to back, when it comes to triggers, this is not the worst but I just wish there was a, a, an updated trigger that they would do for this thing because man, it would really make this gun shine at the range. Speaking of the worst trigger on the table, the CSX. I, dude, I love Smith & Wesson, but they made a horrible trigger here. You got some grittiness going on here. This is supposed to be like a single action trigger too, which in theory should be the best trigger up here. You pull, kind of heavy. Let me pull the magazine out. Reset. Nope. 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 I'm pulling the trigger in and out to, to show you. That's not the reset. That's the reset. Really annoying. I hate that feature on this gun. Can you still shoot it well? Yeah. Seven pounds, four ounces. Okay, whatever. So can you shoot it well? Yes. Is it the best trigger? No. One thing you want to consider here too is that in an emergency situation, are you going to remember, and this is something you got to train with. This is not an option. If you buy this gun, you got to practice sweeping that safety off. That is got to do that. Okay. It's, I hate the trigger on this gun, man. And the sights are amazing. The way this gun points is really awesome. It's got a good size, great grip texturing. Love the back strap. Love, love a lot about this gun. They just, they need to update the trigger and update that thing quickly. Again, the Shield Plus, man. Points natural, love the sights on here. Love to get, get a set of night sights on this gun, really. Grip texturing, the way this gun feels. But the money in this gun is not only the increased capacity. Whew, man, some things are just almost perfect. And that's one of those things. Let's pull the trigger, man. Let's see where we're at. Five pounds, 13 ounces. Man. Let's pull it one more time. Five pounds, nine ounces. It's right under six pounds. It's in that sweet spot where a concealed carry trigger should be. Not too light, not too heavy. Amazing job there, dude. That gun, if there was ever a gun that shot like a bigger gun or shot way better than what it's supposed to, you're looking at it right there. Good holster, good gun belt. Y'all already know what I use. I don't have to plug them, but I will. There's a link down below, Tolster and Core Essentials. Boom, there you go. That's all I'm gonna say on that. Taurus GX4. Taurus. I've given you guys a hard time in the past for some of the things that you put in your manuals and stuff, but I gotta say, you got a pretty nice gun here, dude. Flat face trigger right here. Very short travel. It's a little bit on the heavier side. Reset, very clean. Feels good in the hand, man. They, do they, every, oh, I got a little bit off there. Every iteration of the Taurus, man, they just keep getting better, dude. Six pounds, nine ounces, respectively. Not too bad, dude. I, I'm really starting to become a fan 
of these guns. I wish they would make them in the freaking USA. You know, I get it. The Hellcat's made in Croatia. I just wish they would make them in the United States, dude. They're made in Brazil, but every iteration just keeps getting a little bit better and better, dude. That's a great shooting gun. P365, man, I've done this gun so many times. It's a very good shooting gun for the size that we're talking about, dude. It's pretty incredible. Let's pull it and then I'll show you what it looks like. Six pounds, six ounces. Looking at it, it kind of has that little bit of a curve to it. Once you get it here, there's a little bit of wall and it breaks. Reset. Boom. Right there. Again, it kind of sticks out a little bit far, kind of like the Max 9 in a way, doesn't it? But this is just a cleaner trigger all the way around. Sights on this gun, dude, just like the Max 9. Absolutely incredible. If we're talking about stock sights, by the way, I think the Max 9 and the P365, I think the P365, as far as contrast, and what I like personally is a little bit better with the X-Ray, but the Max 9 has a great set of sights on it. All these things can be changed. We're just talking stock options. Hellcat Pro. A little bit of take up right there. Hit the wall. A little bit of creep and it breaks. Reset. Boom. As far as the most audible and tactile reset, you're looking at it. This one is pretty good. Six pounds, 13 ounces. I think that's a little high. Let's pull it one more time. I want to be fair here. Six pounds, 11 out. Well, I guess that's about pretty close. Uh, so there you go, man. The Hellcat, it shoots good, but it's not the best shooting gun on the table, which I'm going to, I swear to you, here in pros and cons, we're going to get right back to that. P365 XL, dude. They do a really good job, man, of differentiating this one from the regular P365, and it starts with this trigger. Flat face trigger, X-series trigger, boom. Flat face triggers, they do make a big difference on the range. Reset, very nice. Very nice trigger, very little travel. These guys got it figured out. Let's pull it. Ooh, five pounds, six ounces. Is that right? I got to pull that one again. Five pounds, 13 ounces. Okay. So as far as the lightest triggers, as far as what I just pulled here, and I think that's pretty accurate, P365 XL and the Shield Plus. Pros and cons, baby. We have just cooked up this entire meal, and now we are ready to eat and finally get done with this video. Let's get into it. All right, let's hand out some awards here really quick for best shooting pistol on the table. That goes to Shield Plus, already said that. When we talk about the smallest size carry gun, the award's gonna go to the P365. The only reason I don't choose the Taurus more for this, because it's it's almost the same size. Like Miss Techshot said, this was a great thing. I asked her right before we started recording, I said, which one do you pick as far as like size? And she was like, P365 or Max 9? And I said, well, why skip over the Taurus? Excellent point, dude. Trust Ruger more than Taurus. That's not a knock against Taurus because this gun has been nothing short of incredible. The G3C or the G2C, the G3, they've been good guns so far, but I haven't put 5,000 rounds to each one of these guns. So I'm not gonna sit here and tell you I trust my life completely to this gun. On the flip side, if all I have is 300 bucks and I wanna protect my family and myself, I'm probably gonna go with the Taurus, okay? I have four, I'm very fortunate enough to have these options though, and I'm just telling you, I trust Smith & Wesson, I trust SIG, I trust Ruger more than what I trust Taurus. But that trust is starting to grow, and this is just my personal thing with these guns. With each iteration, they're getting better, but just because it's the smallest doesn't necessarily make it the best option. Sometimes $100 more, i.e. Shield M2.0, I'm thinking, or Ruger, sometimes that $100, man, it's just a peace of mind type of thing, okay? But smallest gun award goes to the P365. Best gun that in the hand, the best feeling gun in the hand award goes to the P365 XL. Excellent balance, just long enough, get a full grip. This gun, dude, it's amazing. Absolutely incredible. 
Let's talk about some of the pros and cons on each one. And I'm just gonna point on some of these. Pros on the Max 9, this one, great contrast with the sights. Grip texturing is fantastic. As far as some of the cons, updated trigger needs to happen. And this magazine release, dude, I'm not a huge fan of this. And I just talked about how much I trust this gun, but I've noticed it has been sticking on me. So you see how the magazine is not actually moving? All right, it's actually starting, and these guns are unloaded, obviously, but it's actually sticking somewhere in there. That spring or something is sticking. So it, it you can pull it out, but if you're expecting that thing to just drop out, it's just not happening. Not sure what's going on here. Um, I will contact them and see if we can get an answer on that. Magazine is locking in properly. That's just not working. That's a con in my book as far as that. Overall grade on the Max 9, I would give it like an 8. We really need to see what that issue is, though. CSX, pros on this gun, man. Excellent feel in the hand, dude. They really nailed that part of it. You got enough of a hump back here where it just fills your hand up really nicely. Points great. The three-dot setup, Smith & Wesson does a great job here. Not much contrast, but it really draws your front eye there. Although you're looking at three dots all together, all the same size, it just points really good. It's not a bad shooter, man, but the cons, no optic provision here, which is a big deal in today's market. And also, I'm not a huge fan of guns with safeties on them. And this one, you have to use the safety. All of that aside, though, this trigger, horrendous. The Shield Plus. Let's talk about the cons first. All right, that's it. Now let's talk about the pros. The trigger, front and rear slide serrations. You can get these optics ready. The sights are pretty decent. Three dot setup, definitely would prefer night sights, of course. Grip texturing, they pretty much nailed it there. Reversible magazine release, capacity 10 and 13. And did I mention, this is probably the best shooting gun on the table. Freaking amazing Smith & Wesson Shield Plus. Taurus GX4, pros and cons, pros on this gun. The grip texturing is absolutely incredible. The size to weight to capacity ratio, they nailed it 11 plus one. Overall, this is a decent gun for the budget minded man, but it's, I just still don't fully trust Taurus and their guns. And I have no real reason to say that except for past history. And again, this is not necessarily a knock on the gun from like a factual standpoint, this is just my personal opinion right now. I continue to give them a chance though, and I continue to use their guns and review their guns because so far, none of them have really let me down yet. Um, I just gotta get over that thing in my mind, thinking that, you know, Taurus has always kind of been synonymous with cheaper quality. It seems like they've, I don't know, man, maybe turned a new leaf or, use better materials or whatever. They, they, it's really starting to grow on me, man. Overall grade on this one, I would give it like an eight so far. It's been really that good. Great on the CSX. Overall, I'd give it like a seven, man. It's, it's not my favorite. There's a lot I don't like about it. There's some I do like about it. Just not my favorite there. Great on the Shield Plus. We're going with a nine and a half, dude. Almost a 10, almost a perfect score for the Shield Plus. P365 pros. The size on this gun is incredible. 10 rounds. They started this whole thing and they are still continuing to do an amazing job. Best sights on the table. Again, I think the, the P365 just has it with those x-ray sights. As far as the cons, there's really not a lot, man. They really do a nice job. This is a great balanced gun, dude. Love it. I think the trigger is actually really good. I wish it had the XL trigger in this gun. I think it'd be even better. Uh, sometimes getting to this magazine release because of the angle of it can be a little bit difficult and kind of a reach. Those mags don't, you know, it's just the way that release is angled and the size of my hands, whatever. Overall, man, I would give this gun a nine on the scale. The Hellcat Pro, dude, 15 rounds in this gun. 15 rounds, that's incredible considering where we've come and where we are now, 15 rounds in this gun, dude. They, bravo as far as that. 
The sights are actually decent. Love this Hex Wasp, by the way, man. This has done a great job so far. Front and rear side serrations. The grip texturing is incredible. The magazine release is in almost the perfect spot. I think the only con I could think of, really, with this gun, I would definitely, I like the front sight a lot. I wish this was more of a square notch, blacked out. That would be perfect. And I I wish the trigger was just a little bit better. This is, and this is one of the cons on this gun. If it, you know, you're talking about a bigger gun. So I think it's gonna detract some people from everyday carry because of that. So if it is the biggest gun in this market, even though it may be slightly bigger, not even really bigger than this or the second biggest or these are tied. You get what I'm trying to say. It has to be the best shooting gun possible. You know, if you have a gun that's a little bit smaller like this, a little bit easier to carry and a little bit lighter and it's a better shooter, then it kind of takes away from the attraction of this because the bigger you go, the better it should be as far as a shooter. To me, in my hands, it's not the best shooter and neither was the original Hellcat. But if you want the most capacity and just an awesome setup right here, dude, uh, the Hellcat Pro, it's really hard to beat that because you're talking about the same, almost the same size gun as the XL, but you lose three rounds with the XL. I think what it comes down to though, and, and oh, by the way, the overall grade on the Hellcat, I'm going to give that like an eight and a half, dude. They did an amazing job here. In my hands, it's just not the best shooting gun. And I think that's what it would come down to me because these guns are the same size. If I was just looking at these two exclusively, this one in my hands is a better shooter. I'm more comfortable with it. It's more comfortable in the hand. I hate the sight setup on here. I hate the co-witness they did with the Romeo Zero. Needs to have a deeper and taller notch there. However, they would need to balance that out. I think it just needs to happen. But other than that, I do have kind of the same complaint as far as where the magazine release is. I just like this gun. The way it feels shoots points in my hand. I like it better than the Hellcat Pro in that respect. So I would give this one like a nine as well. It's gonna be a little bit bigger than the Shield Plus. So overall, best gun on the table to me is absolutely the Shield Plus. Size, weight, capacity, shooting, carrying, all of that. That's one thing we have to consider as well. If you're gonna carry and you want maximum concealability, P365 or even the Taurus, Shield Plus is right there. These guns, I think, as far as the Shield Plus, the P365, I tend to gravitate to the smaller versions like these guns as opposed to the bigger XL or even the Hellcat Pro because although I am losing a few rounds, there's so much easier to carry, man. That, that half of an inch inside the waistband, it makes a pretty big difference. That's just my opinion though. So Shield Plus, I think, wins this tournament. I hope you enjoyed everything that we had to offer here today and all of the information that you got. Let me know what your opinion is down in the comments below. See you in the next one. And as always, hold them down.